<laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back. Welcome back to a very special video. I have another teammate of mine, Matt Anderson. You guys have been asking for him. What's up everyone? I'm excited to watch some volleyball with Eric and you guys and discuss one of our old matches. Yes, one of our old matches. You guys pretty much know everything about Matt, but he went to Penn State. He's an All-American. He's a national champion. He's a player of the year. He's a two-time Olympian. Co-player of the year. Shout out to Paul Lottman. I didn't know that. I, actually, I think I did know that. Two-time Olympian, bronze medalist, World League World Cup winner, World Cup MVP, mm -hmm. and a four-time Champions League winner. Pretty impressive. When I say that, what goes through your mind? I'm about like three, four years removed from it, so it's it actually settles in a little bit more. From all the wins. Yeah. We haven't won anything since. Yeah. Um, but... <laughs> I meant from the Champions League stuff and like I thought it being a part of it in the time like you couldn't necessarily like get wrapped up in it because then you kind of get too big picture and all that jazz like you know what you talk about as athletes but being removed from it for for quite a few years is like looking back has been pretty cool to be a part of that because it's it's a pretty big history of or a big big part of for history sure. for professional volleyball at least and um, I mean winning it four times but we won it four years in a row. Yeah. Uh, went to the finals every year I played in Kazan, which was seven years, so pretty wild. Yeah. Um, had a chance to win it five times in a row. We played in the final against Lube, uh, but unfortunately they, they beat us. In really? Berlin. I don't yeah. remember that game. It was the super final. Nobody remembers. Oh, no, nobody cares about that one. Yeah. <laughs> pretty impressive. Yes, yeah, Senate Kazan, one of the most historic clubs mm. in the world. Yeah. But I'm so excited for today's video. We're going to be watching Zenit Kazan against Berlin Recycling Volleys from the 2015 Champions League Final Four. We matched up against each other and we just realized we played this game. So we're excited <laughs> to watch the third set react. Wait, I thought we were watching the first set. We are very excited to watch <laughs> the first set, analyze, react, and have some fun. But as you all know, before we get into that, we're going to play a quick game of this or that to get to know Matt a little bit better. Let's do it. All right, Matt, I'm gonna give you two options and you're gonna pick which one you like better kind of off the top of your head. Cool, All right? yeah. Easy one, coffee or tea? Coffee. You drink a lot of coffee. I, I love like. coffee. I, if you're looking, I have about four coffee makers over there. There's a lot of coffee. I think coffee, I just like the taste of it, yeah. Cheers. Cheers to coffee. You grew up in Buffalo. Yeah. Buffalo, New York. But you live here now in the summers. Mm -hmm. East Coast or West Coast? East Coast. Sorry. Not no, really no, sorry. No, no, sorry. There's no shade in these answers, mm -hmm. you guys. Anybody, I Coast. think anybody that has been in the Northeast of America during the fall has a oh. very big argument for that being like the best weather situation. I mean, I love it. So, I hope. I mean, to I'm from have... Hawaii. I, I have a counter argument, but I'm not going to. Yeah, it. I mean, Hawaii is pretty <laughs> awesome too. Um, I just don't. I don't like the the desert climate, and I prefer lush greenery that's natural. Got it. East Coast, cool. So you've been to two Olympics. Mm -hmm. Overall experience, Rio or London? I think I have to choose Rio. Uh, easy because we we won a medal. Because I was on the team. Because I was on the team. No, oh, sorry. No. Eric was on the team. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, My channel. Yeah. Eric. Woo. Just uh, London was cool because it was uh, we were actually in the village and we're fully yeah. immersed in like the actual Olympic experience. But I was also 25. I first Olympics didn't know what was going on and was just happy to be there when. You have no idea what's going on when it's the first one. You're just like, oh. Yeah. Exactly. I drank way too much coffee uh, <laughs> on days off and just kind of like mingled with people in the village and it was it was a really cool experience i'm glad i did it of course however going into rio it's just a little bit more professional about it two of your loves in life i feel like cars mm -hmm. or tattoos oh ooh. Ooh. that's a tough one I mean, if i had to choose which one you uh, had to ch i couldn't have one you can have a car but a normal car yeah i'd choose my tattoos probably uh just because for me tattoos my body is like a canvas in a way and the tattoos are my story. Whether it's just something that's fun or something that is really meaningful to me. How many do you have? Do you know? I think if you count them all individually, it's like 19, something like that. Well, actually I just got this one from my family, so I had three Love more. Love that one. So it's maybe 22 now. Okay, cool. 
You have played most of your career in Italy or Russia. Mm -hmm. So Italy or Russia? That's uh, a tough one. That's, that's a tough one. That's. I mean, my time with Kazan was pretty incredible. I remember when I signed with them, I referred to them as the Yankees of of professional volleyball. For sure. I mean, just the the establishment, the organization, and the fact that they were fighting for the Champions League and yeah. Russian League every year, and they still are. So that was pretty awesome. But the, the lifestyle in Italy, this the social part of it, fits me more and fits my family more now. And and that's why I'm choosing to go back there to play. Yeah, and that's going back to the Perugia. Two more. Mm -hmm. Beach vacation or mountain snow vacation? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Probably mountains. We went to Montana this past fall. You did. It was really fun. It was really cool. Just We were afraid of bears because there was a couple of bear sightings, but we still went on some hikes and stuff like that. It was fun. Fun. Well, the yeah. ocean has sharks. Yeah. No, Another, I, mean, I hate the ocean. Sorry, ocean lovers. I don't like it. Oh, okay, never come to Hawaii. Um, I do like Hawaii. Sorry. There, there's things. Give me all right, time. last question. You're an opposite for USA, mm -hmm. but you've played most of your career as an outside. Mm -hmm. Outside or opposite? Well, I played all of my career, my professional career as an outside. So I've yes. never played. I'm going to maybe play in Perugia as an opposite right now. So at this point in time, I've had to choose opposite because that's what I think is going to help me and my team win a gold medal. And that's what I want to do. What a great guy. No, I mean, you're you're great at both. So that's all we have. Matt, thanks for playing. Yeah, now we know a little bit more about Matt Anderson. All right, guys. Like we said, we're going to be watching the first set from our matchup from 2015. Zenit Kazan against BR Volleys. Matt, do you remember anything about this match? <laughs> or what do you remember yeah. about this match? This So this was the first time we ended up winning Champions League. Um... This was right after I took a, a personal break from playing volleyball. So oh, I this is the year. Okay. Yeah, so I, I was only playing Champions League this year um, when, I came, when I came back with uh, Kazan. Yeah. But um, it was funny. I think it was right before the servant passed before this match. I don't know. I was feeling really good and loose, and I thought I could do something, and I couldn't. I stretched a little too far, and like oh. my hamstrings and back kind of got a little messed up. But Oh, you sure played like it. Yeah. I remember that, but but yeah, this this Champions League final four was special for our team. It was in Berlin. It was in our home arena. They put up extra stands. I think there were probably around eleven thousand fans for these matches. So yeah. it was an awesome event. Shout out to BR Volleys for putting on this mm -hmm. event. And it was loud. It was loud. But Great good. time. But good. Like yeah. they handed out those paper things. Oh and yeah, like yeah, they yeah. For clap sure. all together. In all German matches. Yeah. It was fun. And all right, <clears throat> we're gonna get started. Oh, look who we have serving. Kazan up 16-13, Matt serving. I hope it's not an error because I always start with an error. Oh, almost an error on our part. Nice up, Paul. Paul was good at defense, actually. <laughs> Paul's a good player. Nice. What What happened? What happened? Did Kavika just block Leon? Did Kavika just block Leon? Is, <laughs> is, this, um, is this happening right now? I think they call the lift on him in like the cover, maybe. Let's see. Maroof. Could be. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I need to go back here. Because is Kavika even over the net? <laughs> Soft block, man. Kavika knows that he can't block Leon, basically. But so I feel like he's just back trying to get a soft block. And I guess kind of. Uh oh. Maybe a lift. Yeah. I can see. Where. Open palm. Open palm. Kind of covers. They always. But that was a nice serve by you. Somehow we managed to get that ball. Yeah. Good save by Kavika. Kavika with the rip. Play. He's decent. <laughs> nice. Oh. Up. Oh. Over. Dig. I'm used to those digs in training. <laughs> in <now>. training. <laughs> what? Oh. And then he hit it out. Wow. Dang. So that's the thing about defense, it can be pre really frustrating for the opponent, just getting dig after dig after dig. Mm -hmm. And Leon gets dug here by our seven footer, Robert Crom. Cuts off a little bit too much angle there and hits it out. Yeah. He probably just wanted to hit the line and he probably will this point, but nice pass. It's, it was really interesting. Oh, that was straight over the yeah. block. Leon's pretty athletic. Um, I was gonna say, oh, this year 
it was pretty interesting because we had two setters. We had Maroof, and who's an incredible setter, uh, very deceptive. And then we had uh, Kobzar, uh, the Russian setter, who's now their starting setter. But um, it was early in Igor's career, and there was matches where we were literally bouncing back and forth between yeah. the setters. It felt like the connection between Maroof and Mikhailov was better. So when we were kind of playing as a team that we wanted Mikhailov to yeah. kind of go off, he would play. And um, that's really interesting. Actually. When we wanted Leon to kind of go off, we would have Igor play. It was it was very interesting. At least that's the way I perceived it. I don't know. Love the insight. That's yeah. that's. I did not. Was that was he over? Yeah, he was really close. A Polykov. Gosh, his serve was funky. Really strange. It had a lot of side spin. It wasn't exactly like a true spin. Correct. Yeah. And it had decent pace, so you were just like, where is this serve going to go? You just didn't know. Yeah, he has a, a serve that is deceptively like on you fast. Shout like, out to Scott Tuzinski serving here. Scott a Olympic gold medalist for USA. Oh. Oops. <laughs> I d so against Leon, you're not going to get that many digs, let's be mm -hmm. honest. So I try to, I charge in here. I'm so shallow. I cannot do, do those splits anymore. And just try to get on it, try to be early, but it just comes so fast sometimes that yeah, can't really do much there. Yeah, I, I still think he's arguably the most offensive player in volleyball right now. Yeah. I mean, there's guys like Liao, who is incredibly strong and has a lot of, a lot of shots and angles. Juan Terrain has been one of the best fast hitting players in the world for many years. Um, there's opposites like Zaitsev, um, Sokolov, who are just big guys, Grozer, that are just going to hit the crap out of the ball. But Yeah, my Leon, face knows. <laughs> Leon is pretty gnarly. Yeah. Nice transition. Krom with the roll shot. So that's Krom. He's seven-footer German. He had some really good matches this Champions League. Maybe not the most, the best passer mm -hmm. out there, but he got the job done offensively and had some sick roll shots, apparently. Yeah, this was Tortoise. I mean, he only played a few more years after yeah. this, right? And so I think as a player, you just, you gain more knowledge as you're playing and For you sure. realize, like, Leon at this point in his career was pretty much just power. Just hit the ball high, hard, hit different mm. shots. Yeah, uh, but it was pretty much unloading every time. Where Krom is a good oh. guy to watch for us tall big guys to like get different shots in your game. Oh, okay. He wasn't always, you know, he could just couldn't. You can't overpower everything all the time, and so to have different shots in your arsenal is, is really something you want for to develop. Sure. Matt dropping the knowledge like that. Yeah, high hand shot. Mm -hmm. So when you're that was a triple block. Matt, as an outside or an opposite, mm -hmm. you're facing a triple block. What are you looking at? What are you aiming for? What's your goal on a, on a good high ball set? Yeah, uh, obviously keep the ball in front of you. Um, high balls, the challenge with them is to be able to keep your vision on the block as you're spiking. Um, because the ball is, you obviously it's coming from a higher point, so you have to watch oh, it longer service, and where it's going. Um, and so if you're able to keep your peripherals on the block and see where they are, um, it also helps you keep your eye on the court. But for the most part, we know where we are on the court at all times. And you want to see, you know, before the play even starts, you want to know who your blockers are, uh, sure. who's the, the stronger. Obviously, you stay away from the middles at all costs because they're there for one reason for the nice most part. Set, and that's, Kavika. Yeah, that was a really good set. And Paul's... Paul's awesome. Paul's been playing international volleyball since yeah. he was like 17, I think, right? Yeah, something like that. Um, but anyways, high ball, you just try to see, locate the, the weaker blocker, and if they don't close the line or they give you any bit of room, you know, high Fine. hands, block out. Got it. I mean, I used to try to go over blocks like that, but it doesn't always work these days. <laughs> it kind of does. Yes! Uh, oh, that was you. Yeah. yeah! Oh, look at you. Yeah. Fire it up. Let's see, let's see this here. Hi, Seam. See, I'm staying away from Kavika, the best blocker up there. <laughs> Not your best strategy there, <laughs> maybe. No, I've right. been playing with Kavika since I was 17. Yeah, what? Youth? Youth? 
National, uh, youth national, junior? Uh, I think it was the youth national team. Uh, it was the year of world championships, but it was being held in Algeria, and we couldn't go. The U.S. government wanted us to travel there. Oh, dang it. Oh, yeah, that's who you guys went to Brazil. Okay. Yeah. But you were a middle. I was a middle blocker back then, yeah. Fun times. Yeah, you're actually got you're so versatile. <laughs> <laughs> I got recruited to Penn State as a middle blocker, and during one of the, the few captain's practices we had in the fall before our fall training block, um, that was a gnarly shot. That was a gnarly pipe. Sorry to interrupt. Like, no chance to dig that ball. Yeah. Yeah. That's the fun thing about playing for oh. that team. Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm not listening sour. at all. <laughs> One of the fun things about playing on a team like Kazan was I always joked and said I was just hired as the second Libro because we had so much firepower that, yeah. I mean, there's times in trainings where, even trainings where I would get like three or four sets the entire two and a half hours were on the court, so. How are you not cold? Yeah, I just passed, you know, and then, I mean, it happens in matches too, when, when Leon's going off, yeah, it keeps that in mind, I'm completely okay with that. Yeah, I mean, that's true, but you are a very good passer, I will compliment you, I'm allowed to compliment my guests, of course. Thank you. Thank were you. you always a good passer, or did you work on it a lot, did it, something that came natural to you? Um, I think what came natural to me was, like, the touch, the Ooh. feel. And I think uh, my my technical work definitely has improved over the years. Um, sure. And I still work with it. Oh, love. Yeah. Scotty coming underneath the net. <laughs> Trying to uh, sprain your ankle. <laughs> um, but you put in a lot of work. Yeah. I, I came on the team when we had, like, the best passing team in the world out here on Team USA. Reed Pretty and Riley Salmon and Rich Lamborn, like, they just, they're off a gold medal, you know, like, these guys obviously knew how to pass the ball and um, dealing with servers like Clay Stanley, Evan Paddock, <laughs> you know, there was some wild serves coming at you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, working with all those guys and just more so on... Nice play there. Oh. Yeah. That's what your, that's what your job was, just yeah. put the ball in, maybe Leon will put it away. Yeah. But no, that was a good spike. But a couple of plays ago, Mikhailov was serving, mm -hmm. gnarly server, and I kind of just fought the ball off, got the pass up, what I'm saying, to maybe 13, 14 feet. Mm -hmm. In that situation, these servers are coming so hard, you guys, that you have to just get it up sometimes. You really just, you don't want to get aced, you don't want to put it over the mm -hmm. net. All right, here you go, 23-21. Nice pass by our, our DS there. So when you're passing hard serves, you don't always have to try and make it perfect. You can bring it off right. the net, have your team run an offense, and in that situation, that's what I tried to do. Yeah, I think there, there's categories of servers, and like Leon, Mikhailov, Grozer, you, me. Um, there's certain servers where you're Kavika. You're quote unquote. <gasps> yeah, Did he just ace me. I think uh, he ace me in one. I didn't know that was coming, sorry. It's okay. I mean, it's good it serve. was a good serve. Yeah. Um, these This category of servers, you you serve. change your idea of what a perfect pass is. And, 100%. And perfect passes for those is, like Eric said, one, you don't get aced. You know, even if you're fighting off with one arm, you're not getting aced. Yeah. Um, and then two, you, you shoot for five to six feet off the net, you know, kind of middle of the court, it still gives your setter multiple options to run his offense. And and now offenses have become so efficient that even five, six feet off the net, eight feet off the net, you're still running with all, all guys. Yeah. So. Exactly. So it's a good point for passers. You don't always have to be perfect. As yeah. frustrating as it can be to want to pass to the 15-foot line, it happens. Mm -hmm. We all do it. Mm -hmm. Don't think of it as like this negative thing because it can actually be a really positive thing that you don't get aced. Yeah, yeah, and then there's there's so many different versatile options with your offense where you could be running still with speed. Nice pass. What? Uh, <gasps> oh, and he was oh oh the shock oh you're like yeah yeah that's like yeah he saw it that was a great play I'm gonna rewind this one just go for it. Kavika puts in a nice serve. Maybe a little tight from you, but Maruf handled it. That yeah. was a sick up. Yeah, he's over. He he's over. over. Mikhailov probably still remembers that point, <laughs> how far he was over. 
and is working to correct it to this day. Yeah, Max is a machine. Max is one of the most hardworking players I've ever seen in my life. Um, I pride myself on my work ethic, but Max is another level. I mean, sometimes that can come out in a negative way because when you do things mm. for perfection and then you don't get the result, it, it's really hard mentally. And to be able to let that go at times, especially in a big match, I mean, now it's 24, 23, yeah. they have set point. And we want to be in a situation where Max is comfortable getting the next ball again so that it keeps our offense balanced, keeps them on their toes. Um, but there are certain players in the world where if they make a mistake, the whole team, the whole defensive team shifts their scheme to go somewhere else because yeah. they know that person's not getting the ball anymore. Exactly. So great lesson for anyone <clears throat> on the court, really. But Spikers, if you're going to make a mistake, don't dwell on it. Try to move on. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to give the other team a, a clue that you might not get set the next ball or something like that. You want to get right back on that horse and play the next point. Ooh, go, 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 go. Yes, yes. Dang it, we keep getting free balls, though. Oh. Uh, or watching my dig again. My channel. My rules. <laughs> yeah, it's a great shift by Eric. Like, Leon at this point, like I said, he's younger and just full of power at all times. It's pretty wild. It yeah. just kind of keeps was, coming. There were some shots this game I was like, whoa. I have never seen that before. That's yeah, cool. and he just hits a high, deep, it's hard kind of seam ball, ball that Eric just kind of slides right into it and, and puts himself in a great position. Um, that next one's tough, though. I mean, after hitting such a hard ball, he just kind of goes down. over and, and snaps it down. Oh, oh. A little shallow into the course. Young Eric. Got that short haircut too. I know. So speaking of work ethic, have you? You're a very hardworking person. I know it. I see it. Have you always been that way, or was there a shift in your some mentality at a certain point? Yeah, I think young. I think probably around 22. Great pass, Scott. Um. Ooh. So we'll get back to you, but we're in rotation one, which means Paul Carroll, our opposite, is in position four. He's a lefty, awkward. He's not awkward, but lefties on the left, are, it's awkward. Mm -hmm. So it's a tough rotation to side out in for many teams mm -hmm. in this rotation. We just happen to be in it at 24-24. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. But yeah, back to work ethic. So you had a shift. Yeah, so when I came to Team USA, like I hinted towards it before, but I, I mean, I came onto a team that just won a gold medal. And if you didn't work hard, it wasn't a very good environment. It wasn't nice environment mm. where you're like, hey, come on buddy, pick it up. Like you gotta work a little bit harder here. It was like in your face, get your, you gotta get that together. ball. You get, yeah. yeah, you gotta work harder. Like this isn't, this isn't high school volleyball anymore. Like yeah. you, this or is our college, job. college to yeah. be honest. This is our job, it's our livelihood. And you felt that, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it, but same. You felt that as soon as you walked in the gym, and you just had to be on your you had to be on your crap, to use a better word, uh, at all times, and um, <gasps> oh, so it was kind of forced into me. But the results came Wait. after that. Yeah, this is a wild play. What's happening? <gasps> no. Oh, that's how we win the set. They called a lift. <gasps> that, I don't think that would ever be called. Right now it days. is. No, I mean now you can. So almost... I just put a. Not very well. It's actually, it's not a bad ball. But for a lefty, it's really hard. Yeah. <gasps> That's part of row one, like Eric was saying, um, with a lefty on the outside. In what did they call? They called a lift. That second play, I think. His cover. Okay, we're watching that play again. That was a, I, I don't know, it's, I need to watch it. I was distracted by the knowledge that was being yeah, dropped sorry. over here. But it's true, you guys, I think there's the best players in the world that we play against, play with, mm -hmm. pretty decent fight off. Mm -hmm. And they work their butts off. Like you guys have to put in the work, get the reps, get in the weight room. That's just how you're gonna get better. That's how it works. Yeah, I think. I didn't watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good fight off. And, and this is a serve, like we were talking about with Eric before about there's a certain category of servers that you just gotta fight off. And, and it's a really good swing it's a good set by Kavika. It's a really good swing by Paul to re we 
yeah. play on words, recycle the ball back Whoa. to get a good cover. You know, it's just unfortunate that um, Eric had to like sprint from the end line to, to set it. But even the second play by Paul was a smart play into the block yeah. and getting it back and giving your, your team a, another chance to be in a better situation. I cannot believe they called this. I, I, that wasn't a lift either. Yeah, who knows? What a bad way to end this set. But that was a pretty exciting set. Yeah. Kazan wins 26-24 and goes on to win the match 3-1 and advance to the Champions League final. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, that was an exciting set. A little frustrating for us over here on that final point. But for the entire match, mm -hmm. Matt, what do you kind of remember being the key or one reason that you guys may have won? Uh, surf pass battle, I think. We were at a place where um, we had a lot of firepower from the end line. Yeah. And you, a lot. You guys were a good team in system. Um, your middles were a little bit smaller, uh, but they ran a fast offense. Uh, Paul, as a lefty, was really hard to block in yeah. system. Um, and Robert, you know, he was a big guy on the left, but out of system, like I said, he wasn't as powerful. So we were able to scheme a little bit more defensively against him. Uh, but in system, any team is hard to beat. Yeah. So that's why it, there's a constant teeter-totter of do you serve harder to get them out of system, but you maybe make some more errors, or do you just put the ball <laughs> in and yeah. uh, and just I mean give yourself a chance. So there, there's certain schemes and, and mindsets going into each match, but ours was serve hard and pass the ball, and when they're, they're big server to serve, you know, pull it off the net and let our, our big guns on the pins do their job. Exactly. And I know as a passer, playing against a team like Kazan is pretty much a nightmare. A fun nightmare. I mean, when you have Matt, you have Leon, you have Nikolov, you had a Polikov with that weird jump. It's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on you as a passer. And you've experienced it playing against yeah, other for, teams as well. Sure. So I think they just wore us down with their serves. Mm -hmm. By the fourth set, we were just so out of system, getting ace, that it just wasn't really... We didn't really have a chance there at the end, but... Overall, I feel like it was a good game. We put up a fight. Yeah. Made you guys a little bit stressed. And I think overall, it just was a great match to play. Yeah, it was good energy. And of course, playing against the host team at home, it's, uh, it's always fun. For sure. Well, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Matt, thanks so much yeah, for being course. on the channel. That thanks was awesome. Me. So much knowledge from this guy. So awesome. So thanks again. But anyway, guys, get out, play some volleyball, have some fun, and I'll see you all soon. Peace.